life is not merely a spiritual walk, it's a warfare walk. In fact, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3 and 4, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons, plural, we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. So Paul is alluding to the fact then that in a spiritual war, you got to use spiritual weapons. And so we have to then understand that prayer is indeed a spiritual weapon because we're in a spiritual war. Now, the word weapon, when you think about it, it means anything that you use to overpower, to outwit, to overcome an opponent. And here we see that Jesus is letting us understand that he used prayer to overpower Satan's desires towards Peter. And we'll spend more time unpacking that. But even in Mark 9 and verse 28 and 29, when the disciples were trying to cast out a demon out of a demonized boy, they were unsuccessful. Jesus came there perturbed, upset, said, come on guys, when are you guys going to get yourselves together? And then when in the private setting, they said to Jesus, so after Jesus cast out the demons publicly, they privately said, how come we couldn't cast them out? Jesus' words to them were, this kind or this kind of demonic spirit come, come, only comes out through prayer. In other words, through a lifestyle of prayer, through your know, regularity of prayer, through many times in the throne room of God, not going there periodically or when there's a crisis, but when you know your way around God's throne room, that's where the scripture gives us the imagery. When we pray, we're praying before the throne of grace. So when we understand that prayer is indeed a weapon, it gives us the ability to overpower our adversary through prayer. Prayer.